Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Trends Travel. I'm your host for today, Eloise Scoble, and right now I'm at Calixco on 44 on Stanley where it is the place to be. Speaking about the place to be, Slow took us on a Denari Tour Operators Tour, so take a look. There are so many places right under our noses to explore with friends and family. There are even tour operators that can custom design a day of fun for you and your loved ones. But that's me getting way ahead of myself. Let's start our journey from the beginning. We started our day early in the south of Joburg, where we met up with an entrepreneur who is proving that resilience and innovation is key to staying in the tourism sector. Well, my, my background in the tourism industry dates back to 1999 as a young teenager who worked um, in the industry and, and doing everything that needed to be done uh, by the company that employed me. I grew, I became a tourist guide. Uh, by 2002, I was a tourist guide Then I worked until I got dismissed. And at that time, then it was a time that what do I do? But I had already acquired a lot of experience in the industry. I knew 80% of what South African tourism offers. So with that experience, it wasn't an option to go back to the job market. But it was, okay, what can I do for myself and for other people? Then that was to start a business that would lead in this tourism industry. That was the vision, and the vision that still exists. We, we as Dinari, we promote South Africa. We do not just promote South Africa by saying South Africa is good. We show you what South Africa offers. We take you to the attractions. We create travel packages that accommodate people from different backgrounds, lifestyle, you know, history, cultural experiences, and sport. Anything that has to do with traveling. We look for clients, travelers who what do you like and then we put it together and then we, we sell that package to you we promote it to uh, the international and domestic market uh, travelers and then we take you to to the sites and then we give you an experience of a lifetime I think for the South African market to explore the country it's up to us as operators to promote uh, what is there because people wouldn't know what is there unless we put it out there. So our job is to show the domestic uh, travelers that look, you can actually do a lot in your own background. You don't even have to be traveling hours out of your city. There's a lot to do locally in Joburg, in Devon, big cities, and also in other uh, towns. If you go out to to the Northern Cape, they are interesting, you know, like September is coming, it's going to be flowers everywhere. So it is beautiful for us as locals to travel to the Namakwa land and explore the, the flowers, to, you know, to see the, the, the whole area, beautiful, different colors of flowers, it's beautiful. And then if you love of nature, you can, not not, not far, Pilansberg, Northwest, you go there, then you can just have a beautiful game viewing. and. I think in all provinces there is something to experience. With the formalities of the day done and dusted, we were off in our Denari vehicle to pick up a friend. Because as they say, experiences are best enjoyed with a friend. Hey Busi. Hey, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us on Trains Travel. We're excited to have you. Um, you're taking us to your favorite spots in Joburg. That's what we're doing for today. Ah, oh, so, yay! So tell me about the first <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm so excited that you guys came through and I would love to show you my favorite places in Joburg. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're going to my favorite, favorite hangout, mm -hmm. which is in Santon. Okay. And we're going to a best friend, well, a good friend of mine, mm -hmm. and that's Chef Coco. He does the most fabulous Pan-African food. Okay. And we're going to his restaurant, which is in Santon. Okay. It's called um, Epicure, oh, the right. restaurant. He's just launched. Okay. And let me tell you, his presentation, his passion about food is phenomenal. Okay. You will love everything that he does because it's all African and his presentation is very, um, he's got a lot of finesse and he's got a lot of um, passion for what he does and his food is just so amazing. He brings 
Africa and even some French cuisines wow. in terms of his styling of his food, his plating. Okay. It is amazing. I'm sure you're going to love it. And love it we did. Epicure in Santon, Johannesburg is the brainchild of award-winning chef Coco Reynos. The chef has a food philosophy that always engages what it means to be an African and we were excited to experience what he had for our taste buds. So what I wanted to do for you, it's a small platter with the three different African dishes uh, that we serve almost like an appetizer, a way of sharing and welcoming guests uh, at Epicure because as you know we do only Pan-African food so food from uh, Morocco, Ethiopia, oh, Senegal, yeah. Congo, everywhere in Africa so and we try to, to modernize that because I think one of the biggest uh, lack in African cuisine is how do I modernize the visual aspect of the African cuisine and be able to sell it in a restaurant like this and, and also be attractive at the same time and because that's the most important thing. So this is a small uh, dish from uh, Ethiopia it's called Dorowat it's a spicy cabbage and chicken uh, stew which is served with the injera bread injera bread is what you see here it's a it's a it's a fermented uh, pancake oh. so we serve that so we are going to start that orange all dry and then we cook very slow cooking in the tajin with a childhood steeped in restauranting in kinshasa and a formal training at a world-class culinary school in belgium coco is uniquely qualified to lead the new wave of south african cuisine and the johannesburg food scene has enthusiastically embraced his signature style that is uh, pretty much fat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I will say start from north and then you go east and west or west and east. <laughs> but start from north coming down. Okay, let's, okay. let's, let's start. Yes. Okay, let's Perfect. start. Here. So, so that's uh, the Ethiopian dish which is called Dorowat. Okay. Serve with the uh, injera uh, pancakes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you. It's a very, uh, how can I say, spicy dish without being too hot. Mm. Uh, but usually in, uh, in Ethiopia, they like, like burning, burning With hot. Spice. Yes. So, the, uh, what I usually do, we have a, a chili that we serve, which is very hot, that goes where to kind of accommodate our Ethiopian friend oh, and Nigerian yeah. friend who are very, very like burning type of uh, heat they like. I think, I always say that my career started, I think around 75 years. The food was all that was promised and much more and we wanted to hear what inspired this great chef. The reason I'm saying that is because uh, my grandfather was a chef, my mother was a chef, so I use 75 as, a, you know, 25 years per generation and hopefully one of my daughter will say after my career start 100 years ago. <laughs> so it, it's really, I really think that's when my career started, when my grandfather decided to be a chef. And it's really, it's become genetic. Being a chef for me, I am very much convinced that it's in my gene. I've tried something else. Um, didn't work, thanks God. But uh, in South Africa, I arrived 16 years ago. Uh, I used to have a small restaurant in Greenside called Ma Passion, which we will sell French cuisine. But I always made sure that we have like two African starter, two African main course, two African dessert, in order to start slowly, slowly educating the South African palate to African cuisine from every other places. Then from my passion, I moved to uh, Cele Poivre in the Quartermain Hotel, where I was for almost 11 years. So I, I had the Cele Poivre, and then I did uh, Le Petit Sel at the Falstaff, and another restaurant in the Cradle of Humankind. Once again, same philosophy, always thinking that I need to have at least one or two African dishes. 
So when I closed that, I uh, had to reinvent myself. I say, okay, let me, what can I come with? What is the next step of, uh, that I can offer to the uh, eatery scene in uh, Johannesburg? So I came up to the idea, I say, let me try to maybe put my menu the other way around and do 80% African and only 20% uh, French. And then I thought, I was like, no, maybe let me really say who am I. Exactly. I am a Pan-African who is, I think it's uh, more than time that we start reinventing our own cuisine because nobody else will do it for us. So I said, okay, let me claim that and redo uh, beautifully plated and do only African food. And I must tell you, I'm so happy with, because this is really who I am, okay? And also, I'm so happy that the response we've got from the public, public it's really phenomenal. Epicure was only the halfway stop to our great Joburg journey. Next week, we continue the fun in the inner city nightlife. Now, guys, like I always say, we'd love to hear from you. So why don't you hit us up on Twitter or on Instagram on Trends on SABC using the hashtag Trends Travel. At the Top Set Spa Sipfest, you'll find any reason to celebrate. Buy two bottles of Fourth Street Sweet Rosé, Sweet Red, or Sweet White 750 mils for 62 Rand. Only at the Top Set Spa Sipfest. We don't want any death. All traditional places must be sent us to a govern and administer initiates. The agenda is to collapse what was once the leading electricity producer in the whole world. I'm still waiting for him to go lay charges against anybody. I have. And that's why I'm going to see you. 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 And then they must tell us that this is just not much. It's only smoke. It's just a camera pezu. It's ridiculous because we don't have money. Now I have to spend more on paraffin than I used to. Their shacks were dismantled on Monday, but they are back to erect them. You know what gives an African uh, person dignity? It's only a house, and our bank it's chips and kettles. So we want to restore our dignity as well. The people who bend the school are they, our parents. They want us to be, to have a bright future, but they are doing this. Refrain from burning schools, refrain from burning property. I am not missing my words. Those that shall be found, definitely they must face the full might of the law. Back to trends, guys. The home of both the local and the international tourist. Now, do remember, you don't have to leave the borders of this beautiful country to be a tourist or a traveler. You can do as I did. Go up to Dino King Zebra Safaris where you can enjoy an epic day out. We start our journey of just over one hour from SABC headquarters to Rayton in Cullinan. The trek seems endless until we finally make our way to the little dirt road that would take us to Dino King Zebra Safaris. Here, we are received by our guide with a welcome drink in hand. Thank you so much. So tell me, where are we today? We are in uh, near the little village of Rayton, which is about 10 kilometers from Cullinan, the historical village of Cullinan where the diamond mine is, yeah. where the biggest diamond in the world was found. Uh, we're about 10 kilometers from there, and uh, this is our private farm, and we call it Mimbani, which means our home in Swahili. 
and um, you are with Dima King Zebra Safaris today, which is um, a unique experience. It's the only interaction of its kind in the world with zebras. Uh, the interaction tours have been done before with cheetahs and elephants and um, lions and that, but never with zebras. So I hope you're going to enjoy the experience with us today. Great. Now, first of all, this is what you gave me. What is this? Yes, this is a welcome drink. We like to give the people fresh nachi and orange juice, a mixture, hand squeezed. Um, we think it's ideal for the winter. You Before know, we start our zebra tour, we do a little exploring of the property and find a horse enclosure. And another quite curious creature I have never heard of in my life. A zorse. Okay, that's, this is very unusual. Um, you do find them um, here and there, but there's not many. I think in South Africa, there's probably only three in the whole country. Um, I bought her like that when she was eight years old. She was actually an accident. Um, her mother was a Burpad, which is a South African breed of horse. Yeah. And um, next door to her mother, the stud where her mother was from, it was a wildlife rehabilitation center. And then, of course, uh, there was um, when her mother was in season, um, the zebra stallion from next door decided to break through the fence and got to her mother. And that's how she was born. So she's called a Zorse because her father was a, st a zebra stallion and her mother was a, a female horse. A Zorse is a horse that has a zebra as a daddy and a horse as a mommy. Feeling quite brave, I am invited to mount Habibi. And in the spirit of Instagram, I pose for a few pictures by the on-site photographer, Henry. If that isn't brave enough, we venture a little bareback trot. Good day, trenders. Welcome to Trends Travel. This is an absolutely amazing experience. I'm on a Zorse right now, but we're going to take you right through everything that you can experience right here at Dino King Zebra Safari, so stay tuned. While I thought my trot to be impressive, there are far more impressive things to view here, like the horse that can count. Yes, you heard right, he can count. Eight, nine, ten, good boy! Good boy! But for right now, it's time to get back to the business at hand, zebras. I'm first going to introduce you to our two zebras. There's two of them. There's an older one, Yamazan. I've had him for 18 years now. He was actually used in the movie Racing Stripes. He was one of the zebras used in the movie Racing Stripes. He's a male, and then the younger one, Nandi, we're still training her, so sometimes she gets a little bit um, uh, flighty with a, with a tourist, but she doesn't bite or kick or anything like that. After a brief rundown of our day, we're off to meet the zebras. Eloise, um, I want to introduce you. This is Nandi. She's the little girl. She's six years old. Come, Nandi. There we go. This is Franz, he's been our trainer, he's helped us so much to train Nandi over the years. So um, he's been invaluable for the training of the zebras. And this is little Nandi. Um, she'll just get used to you in the beginning, so you must just stroke her between the eyes, they like that, and talk softly to them. And then once she's used to you, she'll be fine. And you can take her here, thank you Franz. This tour is a very unique, first of its kind opportunity to have a personal encounter with zebras in a safe and controlled environment. During this up close and educational encounter, you have an opportunity to learn about the zebras and enjoy the exciting experience of touching, brushing, interacting and photographing these fascinating striped horses of Africa. She's just a bit afraid of the camera. Oh. He's Namazan. He doesn't want to bite. He just yeah. was taught to say, uh, to smile for the movie. And if he rubs himself against you, that means he's mad about you. Oh, you? Okay. okay <laughs> so there we go. From young Nandi, we now meet the star of the show, Namazan. It's our turn for a little quality one on one time. And hold here and then stroke him in the hollow of the neck here. You can stand right close to him. Yes, there we go. Excellent, Eloise. Then it's one last trot for both photogenic zebras who have their photo diaries or modeling calendars filled. Speaking of photographs and our earlier on site photographer, this dynamic duo literally do the most here. Leela speaks to the zebras while Henry takes the most stunning pictures of your interaction.
besides doing the interaction tours for the tourists, yeah. um, we also offer fashion shoots with the zebras um, for magazines, you know, for uh, fashion, high fashion, and also for engagement shoots, yeah. which is when a couple gets in, engaged to get married, um, they come out here and they walk with the zebra in the sunset and we take photographs of them, and they often make an album before their wedding, yeah. um, which is an engagement uh, session album. And then people, when or a lot of people, when they got married, after they married, um, they come and do a trash the dress uh, session. Okay. That's what it's called in America. In yeah. South Africa, it's not really called that. But um, they come and then they, they pose with a zebra and they walk with him with a wedding dress on. And we do a lot of sunset shots with them and shots of them sitting on the Land Rover. Yeah. And then um, Yamas and the zebra is always standing next to them and, and with them. Many have ventured to do this. It's all in the name of a unique experience. While on the subject of unique experiences, we have Vicky riding Nyamazan, a tribute to his days as a movie star in Racing Stripes. From all our outside adventures, we take a little carrot break and Nyamazan is very happy to join us. It's something he does quite often, I'm told. And he used to come to the front door and wait there for carrots. Yeah. And one day my husband and I were sitting in the lounge and we were busy discussing something and we ignored him. Not on purpose, but we were so busy discussing something. And he decided he's not waiting anymore outside, he's coming in. So he just stepped up the step and in he came into the house. And ever since then, if that gate is open, he's in the house like a shot. So what he does is he goes to the fridge and you have to open it for him. He's very intelligent and you have to give him carrots out of the fridge. <laughs> It's quite impressive, I must say, but not as impressive as my newest party trick. Well, trenders, I'm here at Dino King Zebra Safaris, and I'm going to try and give him a carrot if he'd like to. Would you like to join me? There we go. Oh, there we go. Woof. And he, he loves it, and he loves me. Just putting that out there. Hi there. Any more for you? Yeah, no? No, I think he's good, guys. After a brief rest, we make our way to the rustic lapa where all sorts of goodies await us. I bought uh, for them from a local um, bakery. It's very traditionally South African. Yeah. It's called the Broodblik and Coffee Pot. And it's fantastic because they do traditional South African, they call it Buddha Brood. Yeah. The big loaves of bread, they do homemade jams. They have wonderful venison pies, freshly baked venison pies, chicken pies, lamb curry pies, and that's what I've provided for you today, as well as quiche. Um, they have little burros rolls, and they make a lovely snack platters, you know, traditional South African snack platter. There is quite a spread prepared for us, from quiche to the venison pies and freshly made mosbolikis, and not forgetting dessert. If you're feeling healthy, then the succulent fruit skewers are the one. Or, if you're more for coffee and something sweet, then the lemon meringue pie is where it's at. All in all, it's a feast for kings. Then it's time to bow out and make our way home. We had a great time today with Nyamazan. Nyamazan, bow. Yay! We got a bow! Yes, you're, you're a very good zebra. We'll be back with more of Trends Travel right after this very short break. Don't go anywhere. A prominent member of our family has uh, so tragically lost his life this morning inside the mosque. The reality of the situation is we require tighter security perhaps around play, play, uh, places of worship. The president has extended his support. He's also asked that we keep the Modisa family in our thoughts and prayers during this time. When the president pronounced on free education, that was a clear vindication of those students. The generation was vindicated. We had achieved free education. So now why must we still attend court? There will have to be some discussion with the government and with the, you know, with the police and with the justice system. And then they must tell us that this is just not much. It's not much. It's not much. It's not much. It's ridiculous because we don't have money. Now I have to spend more on paraffin than I used to. Their shacks were dismantled on Monday, but they are back to erect them. You know what gives an African uh, person dignity? It's only a house. 
and our bank, it's chips and kettles. So we want to restore our dignity as well. News at nine. We go beyond the headlines of the, the headlines of the day and breaking news to bring you all the angles and in-depth analysis of stories that impact your life. We are on the ball with all economic stories. Our bureaus around the globe are ready to connect you to events as and when they happen. So join us every day at 9 to zoom in on the day's big stories. As democracy mature, we get into discussing very, very sensitive issues. I think that, that there's a lot of people that are applauding it. Um, I'm sure it's going to be appealed. It is the beginning of a long journey of South Africa fighting racism. That sticky label of being a white party, so to speak, doesn't seem to want to go away. So the competition actually helps, and it brings out winning in total. Stay tuned to Media Monitor every Sunday from 9 a.m. So I told you we'd be right back and I didn't lie. We are here with Trends Travel and there's so much more we have in store for you and I won't keep you waiting any longer, so here we go. Calling all foodies, chefs, pastry artists, culinary gurus and of course you and I to the Appetite Festival which is set to make its debut at the Sun Arena in Mainland Pretoria. So, what is the Appetite Fest? Well, we were invited to get a taste of what's to come. We have Jay something at his restaurant doing a, doing a master class as well as hosting the evening. Yeah, and we were looking at how do we actually maximize the readers, the space that they have available, and what do we do to actually bring readers back? Um, and how do we actually uh, so Appetite Fest is a two-day culinary extravaganza. Um, we're targeting family, we're targeting mums, dads, the kids. We're trying to showcase what is the best um, in South Africa and also the international food scene. We're bringing in Matt Gary and George from MasterChef Australia as the kind of the culinary greats um, to do master classes, um, chefs theatres and book signings. We've got the local favourites, we've got Siva, we've got Sarah Graham, we've got Chef and Tea. Um, and we're also bringing in some of South Africa's finest chefs um, that are currently cooking in the kitchens around South Africa. So the likes of Eric Bullpit, Chris Papianis, Adrian Marais. We're bringing those guys in to showcase that not everything has to be international. There is a huge local cooking scene. Um, and then we've got entertainment coming in. You know, it's, it's a, it, like I say, it's an extravaganza to try and explain it um, would do a disservice to the show because it's going to be so massive. First and foremost, we're hugely excited. We've got a massive lineup of South African and international chefs that deserve to be showcased to the world. Most importantly, our South African chefs. And what we're seeking to do is create a food festival which over a period of time grows into the foremost food festival in the country and really becomes an opportunity for our young talent to be inspired by our existing South African talent. We're doing live demos, exclusive masterclasses and book stories. Join us at South Africa's new culinary extravaganza Appetite Fest. The finest chefs, artisan producers, a street group and all the entertainment. Well, I think, you know, as we've developed this precinct, it really has become almost the Santon of Shwani and over a period of time we think that it's only fitting that the food fest will clip right into that precinct and ultimately as the festival grows we're hoping to go into a precinct wide shutdown over Appetite and expose all manner of different products, food services and most importantly South African talent. Look, uh, pretty much just to uh, culminate everything that Appetite is about and everything local, as we said, uh, local artisanal producers and uh, young talent in South Africa. So basically what we've done is we've taken all the classics and just put a modern twist on it. Um, we've got farmers from the Free State, free state in uh, Senegal, Woodview, Wagyu and Sparta who've uh, also sponsored the, the event with us. 
and we're just showcasing their beef, uh, which is Wagyu beef. And it's a Japanese strain that they've actually brought in from Australia to South Africa, which takes a good 25 years to get a proper bloodline, and they've achieved that. So what we've done is we've actually paired it with simple uh, flavors like nigiri, where you'd normally have um, sashimi on, on your nigiri in a sushi form. But we've just added that onto uh, uh, the nigiri, onto the rice, so you can actually just taste the, the beef for the beef. There's no nothing overpowering it. You can taste the raw flavors of the beef, and, and that's actually gone through to the to the whole spread. You know what we've done. Also, we've kept everything simple um, and uncomplicated, natural flavors. You got your classic pairings like salmon and oat cakes and cream cheese. We've just done a nice little oat biscuit, uh, cream cheese panna cotta, um, fresh salmon and a bit of sea fennel from another pr uh, producer, which is just a stone's throw away. And they actually export most of the stuff uh, to the Michelin star restaurants in uh, the UK and Hong Kong. So we've, we've got a, a diverse range of talent in South Africa and we just want to showcase that. Bilbao in the Basque country on Tuesday prepared to host what is considered the Oscars of the food world, the world's 50 best restaurants award ceremony. Top chefs are due to attend the event at which the annual ranking of the world's best restaurants is announced. New York's 11 Madison Park won first place in 2017, while Denmark's Noma has been crowned best restaurant four times. The Best 50 list, which was launched in 2002, has gained prominence among chefs around the globe, rivaling the long-standing Michelin Guide with its star system. There are no criteria for putting a restaurant on the list, which is based on a poll of more than 1,000 chefs, food critics and other industry insiders spread across 26 regions. Each member gets 10 votes, and at least four of those votes have to be restaurants outside their region. He visto simplemente que hay carteles, pero y luego en la prensa y en, la en los eh, medios de comunicación que ha salido el tema y bueno, pues ciertamente es un acontecimiento dado además eh, que aquí en Nusca de Ría pues el tema de la cocina es un tema muy importante, claro. Se conoce el País Vasco por su gastronomía, me, me, me parece que eh, esta premiación de los mejores restaurantes eh, restaurant va, 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 eh, va a ser bien reñida y el nivel debe ser altísimo, sobre todo para uno que viene de otro país y, y, y la gastronomía aquí para mí es espectacular. The Basque region is well known for its culinary traditions. The Basque country region was well represented in 2017 with six restaurants making the top 50 list, including Echeberry Grill in 6th place and Luca Ritz taking 9th place. Gumball and Darwin are another group of Cartoon Network character favorites that will be traveling all the way from the city of Elmo to South Africa. The amazing world of Gumball will be brought to South Africa so that they can help scientist extraordinaire Calvin Gizmo stop Czar, the evil robot and his plans to take over the world. The show is underway in Cape Town and will be commencing in Joburg from the 3rd of July. So get your tickets now to see the story unfold in live production. The Elisras Bushveld Festival takes place in early July in the heart of the Bushveld in the Waterberg district of Limpopo. The festival includes cattle shows, a game auction, horse jumping, dog shows, agricultural activities, a three-day battle for the best 4x4 competition, a game farms expo, hunting opportunities, bird and tree identification competitions, traditional food, a beer tent and a huge campfire. The Komodi Bird Prawn Festival will be celebrating with fun and entertainment for the whole family. Many South African artists will be performing on large outdoor stage. A wide variety of stalls will be provided to keep your appetite at bay and a beer tent to keep you hydrated. A fun fair should keep the kids entertained along with many more activities and event not to be missed. 
Months of suspense and speculation has ended with the eagerly anticipated announcement of the theme for the 2018 Vodacom Durban July. And the It Is Time concept has been warmly received in racing, fashion and social circles. The theme is embraced by thousands of people who attend the race day at the Gravel Race Course and for the many hundreds throughout South Africa who hold race day functions at home to celebrate what has become known as Africa's greatest horse racing event. So whip out your most fabulous outfit and get ready to toast to time. Nongoko, directed by James Ngobo, is set in a shebeen outside of Johannesburg in the 1950s vibrant yet turbulent time in the history of the country. The play, one of Fugard's earliest works, tells the tale of displaced township individuals who are gripped by a futile longing to belong and be loved. You have until the 15th of July to get to the Market Theatre to watch this spectacular production. Guys, like I said earlier, we'd love to hear from you, so why don't you post some of your pictures, like us, tweet us, all on Trends on SABC using the hashtag Trends Travel. question just the current situation that we are in crisis that we are not protecting our children even after a criminal case is opened it's very difficult to negotiate until to communicate to you as to where exactly are we because we have presented a comprehensive package we have compromised a lot and if escom is not going to be in their senses, it, they will really be giving us, uh, putting us into a serious problem. The story of refugees is one of resilience, perseverance and courage. Ours must be of solidarity, compassion and action. If they will be coming here and say they want everything free from home affairs, we can't do that. To do application for passport is a very, very big problem. They don't allow the person to have a passport as a, as a refugee. But what did they die? Mfuna a death certificate from Duana. Mfuna a paperwork as a spell. Back to back victories for Bongusa Mtembo, his second down run victory. It was very emotional, you know. Uh, I've been putting a lot of work on my training. I'm very happy. Boy, is amazing. Just completely unexpected, just a dream come true. Happy birthday to you. I got married to my wife. We agreed on one thing that uh, we will not have s every night. Three times a week we said to ourselves. <laughs> The lava was coming down and seeping through the plots of land. Kim Jong Un, he really has been uh, open and very honorable. We're probably looking at yet another case of North Korea getting a timeout, and getting a pass. Restaurants in different parts of the world are really doing the most to give their regions uniqueness. So much so that there are a couple of bistros that are becoming World Heritage sites. Let's take a look. Typical Parisian bistros and cafes could join the UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage List in 2020 after an association of owners, actors and other individuals launched a campaign to grant these establishments protected status. 
These sites, usually set along the pavements of the French capital, have come to symbolize the strength and defiance of Parisians and their joy of life after the November 2015 attacks that left 130 people dead, several of which were gunned down at such bistros and cafes. For many tourists and French citizens, these Paris venues have always been an emblematic part of the city. There's a, only a few cities where there's really like a cafe culture, bistro culture, and Paris is one of them. And it's like my favorite part about coming to Paris. They're just, I mean, they're everywhere, right? We can, we'd be walking down the street and be like, oh, let's get a cup of coffee. And then it's so easy for us to just pop in anywhere. And then you can't do that in most places. According to Elaine Fontaine, bistro owner and founder of the association, bistros are also losing the battle against fast food and other more profitable restaurants. Bistros made up to 50% of the Parisian restaurants 30 years ago, while they only represent 14% today. UNESCO recognition would help boost and perpetuate the bistro tradition by adding prestige to the establishments and identifying them clearly for tourists in guidebooks and on front windows. Les patrons pourront transmettre beaucoup plus facilement à leurs enfants ou à leurs employés parce qu'il y aura la fierté que votre établissement, et c'est rare quand même, est reconnu au patrimoine immatériel de l'UNESCO. Les touristes vont savoir où se diriger dans Paris, s'ils veulent aller vers un restaurant, vers un restaurant gastronomique, ils iront vers un restaurant gastronomique, s'ils veulent aller vers une sorte de tuerie ou vers un fast food, ils iront, et s'ils veulent aller à la rencontre du peuple de Paris à travers ses bistrots, etc., ben, il y aura un label, on sera dans le guide, il y aura une vitrophonie, cet établissement est à ce qu'on peut prendre une de Moscou. A final version of the dossier will be submitted to the French Ministry of Culture in December 2018, where it will be examined for potential submission to UNESCO. It's a recompense to Paris, we think to the gastronomy, to the cuisine really gastronomic. And I think that the bistro, in any case, a good part of the bistro, and this one, we are a good example. It's also in this kind of place that we can have a good traditional cuisine, without for instance going to be taped in exorbitant prices. So I think that this is certainly a very good compromise between the gastronomy top level, which is not for everyone, at least not every day, and a lot of the restaurants that are more mediocre, Paris's City Hall and several prominent French personalities such as actors Jacques Weber, Pierre Arditi and Jean-Pierre de Roussine support the initiative. Sparkling Rainbow Pizza is bringing a touch of bling to the menu at a pizzeria in the California beach town of Santa Monica, west of Los Angeles. The pizza, named Magical AF, combines a margarita pie with brightly colored edible glitter, which the restaurant terms Unicorn Puke. Dagwood's Pizzeria started making the Glitter Pizza as a limited edition menu item last year, General Manager Mark Peters said. But high demand from eager customers spotting it on the restaurant's social media sites forced them to bring it back. And Peters says its popularity has ensured it's not going anywhere. Well, I think like the, how it's called the Magical AF, I really think it's Magical AF. This actually tastes pretty good. It was really good. I liked it a lot. I like how when you to put your fingers on the cheese, or there's glitter on your fingers. It's colorful. <laughs> I looked at it and I thought, no, okay, pretty good.
crazy. It's it's really a lot of everybody. I've noticed uh, everyone from kids that are like two years old losing their minds over it to people that are in their 70s uh, ordering these pizzas just because it's kind of like a WTF. This is amazing. I mean, I know the glitter thing is a little bit explosive right now, but nobody's seen a glitter pizza. So it's uh, it's been really fun for everybody. Peter says the restaurant has come up with a few themed pizzas in the past, like a green pizza for St. Patrick's Day and a marijuana leaf pizza for 420, the day of celebration for pot fans. But the rainbow glitter pizza is unique. Are robots about to take over the worldwide famous culinary art of pizzas? This is what French startup Ekim believes with its brand new concept of a pizza YOLO robot. Usually seen in factories, this robot is capable of spreading tomato sauce on the pizza base, putting the pizza in the oven, taking a cardboard box and cutting the pizza. The robot gestures have been synchronized on those of real life pizza YOLOs, from the art of spreading the dough to the technique of putting oil and pepper on top of a steaming pizza. Able to perform several tasks at once with its three arms, inventors say the pizza-making robot can deliver every 30 minutes up to 120 pizzas an hour, when a simple human being only reaches 40 pizzas an hour. But it's not all about being fast. All the ingredients offered to the customers are organic and carefully selected in France and Italy. Donc la robotique permet vraiment de personnaliser sa pizza à tout moment de la journée, même jusqu'à 2h du matin. Donc ça c'est quelque chose d'assez inouï et nouveau, euh, que ne peut pas être fait dans une, à une restauration euh, rapide ou traditionnelle. Euh, c'est en ça que la robotique apporte quelque chose, une expérience est totalement nouvelle. En plus elle rassure le, le client sur la notion de temps. Euh, les, euh, dans le monde aujourd'hui les gens ont de moins en moins de temps pour déjeuner, ils ont à peine 30 minutes pour déjeuner. Et pour cela, eh ben, ils arbitrent entre le temps qu'ils ont et, et la qualité de leur nourriture. Et nous on va pouvoir leur offrir les deux. The idea sprouted in the heads of two French engineers as they were still in university. Fed up with eating low-quality fast food, the only meals they could afford at the time, they started thinking about a solution which could reconcile rapidity and quality at any hour of the day. Egyptian artist and assistant professor Mai Ali Nada does not need a wide color palette to create his striking portraits and sketches. Nada is able to draw people and depict nature and animals with a single tool, a wooden burning pen. The wood burner powered by electricity heats up and burns the wooden canvas, creating different shades of brown, all controlled by Nada. اختلاف بين حرق الخشب وبين الزيت اختلاف جوهري في لوحة الزيت مثلا انت بتبدأها كاملة بس مش بمعالم محددة وتبدأ تقرب بالتفاصيل حبة حبة فاللوحة تتدرب كلها من مش مترتبة قوي تترتب بالوقت في حرق الخشب لا انت بتخلص من جزء جزء بكامل تفاصيله لان هي ما فيهاش حتة المسح يعني دي من احدى صعوباتها ان الغلطة اللي بتحصل ما بتتمسحش ما بتتصلح the artist uses pyrography to create her pieces, a technique that relies on burn masks to draw and create shapes on wood and other materials. Nada has had a love for art since childhood and starting at a young age, spent many years painting on various materials. Her love for art influenced her choice of study, but the artist only discovered drawing by burning wood after graduating. 
هو حتى الان ان الناس تطلب مني بورتريهات حرق الخشب انا شويه صعبه فيه لان انا ما رضيتش ابيع حاجاتي زي ما بقول لحضرتك اللوحه لما بتقعد معايا خمس شهور فكره التعلق بيها بتبقى صعبه بالنسبه لي انما بيطلب مني خامات تانية او شغاله طبعا اجي عند حرق الخشب وانا ضعيفه شويه من الناحيه دي Now, with a little over six years of practicing this type of art, Nada believes the technique should be taught at art schools because of its raw and natural undertones. إن التعبير ممكن يبقى أعلى عن طريق الاستغناء عن اللون. مش اللي متعارف عليه إن اللون بيعلي التعبير. لا أنت ممكن. تعلي في التونات تستخدم الضل والنور في ان انت تعلي التعبير بالمونوكروم او باللون الواحد Although it seems simple, Nada said burning wood is not as easy as it looks. One portrait can take up to five months for her to complete as each meticulous dot on the wooden slab needs to be carefully placed. The artist sells some of her artwork except for the pieces she creates by burning wood because she grows too attached to them by the time she completes them. And that's all we have for you on today's edition of Trends Travel. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. And do remember you can catch us again next week, same time, same place. Also remember to post, tag and like us all on Trends on SAVC using the hashtag Trends Travel. At nine, we go beyond the headlines of the day and breaking news to bring you all the angles and in-depth analysis of stories that impact your life. We are on the ball with all economic stories. Our bureaus around the globe are ready to connect you to events as and when they happen. So join us every day at nine to zoom in on the day's big stories. A prominent member of our family has uh, so tragically lost his life this morning inside the mosque. The reality of the situation is we require tighter security perhaps around play, uh, places of worship. The president has extended his support. He's also asked that we keep the Modisa family in our thoughts and prayers during this time. When the president pronounced on free education, that was a clear vindication of those students. The generation was vindicated. We had achieved free education. So now why must we still attend court? There will have to be some discussion with the government and with the, you know, with the police and with the justice system. The causes of depression in men is essentially the same as in women. And when we look overall at the causes of depression, uh, it's, it's really a, a multifactorial kind of thing. It's, it's, it's nothing, one thing that really causes depression. And if one goes back uh, uh, into one's genetics, into your family history, there's often a genetic component to it where um, you find that if there has been a family member, a mother or a father that has had depression, that there's a a higher chance that one of the children will, will have depression. Then also uh, there are um, the kind of circumstantial things that can cause depression. At any period of stress, and I mean, I suppose more specifically in men, we often see financial stress, we see work stress that are the kind of stressors that provide um, significant stress over a period of time that can trigger a thing. But ultimately, depression is a biochemical, is a medical illness. There are certain chemicals in the brain, uh, uh, for instance, uh, the main ones that has got to do with regulating mood or how people feel is that of serotonin, uh, perhaps noradrenaline and perhaps even dopamine, the three that might take a, a play a role in, in causing depression. And it's often those three things or those chemicals that, that, that uh, the concentration becomes abnormal and that is why you need antidepressants to restore the balance and to restore those chemicals in your brain and to help you regulate your mood on a more normal level. Men always have egos and they always feel that if they need to go for help, especially if it's psychiatric, psychological help, that this, this is uh, often a, a sign of weakness. But again, you know, one needs to explain to men that um, depression is a mental, is a biological illness. 
and that it needs help and it needs to be treated from a medical point of view. And, and often once they understand that, that it's a medical thing, it kind of makes them more at ease, they're more inclined to come for help and, and take their medication. But I think the stigma, and unfortunately we've still got lots of stigma in our society these days, um, that, that is, uh, works against you know, men coming forward to get help. SABCnews.com is your one-stop digital portal to all the news you need. With a website that is easy to use on mobile, SABC News prides itself in being the primary source of public service content across multiple platforms. Watch live streams of all the big news events on the SABC News YouTube channel, which is one of the most viewed South African YouTube channels globally and catch up on the best of SABC television and radio news. Follow breaking news on all of the SABC News social media platforms, interact with SABC News on Facebook, and stay connected on Twitter for the latest headlines and real-time updates by our reporters. SABC News, everywhere. This brings into question just the current situation that we are in crisis, that we are not protecting our children even after a criminal case is opened. It's very difficult to negotiate until to communicate to you as to where exactly are we because we have presented a comprehensive package. We have compromised a lot and if ESCOM is not going to be in their senses, it, they will really be giving us, uh, putting us into a serious problem. The story of refugees is one of resilience, perseverance and courage. Ours must be of solidarity, compassion and action. If they will be coming here and say they want everything free from home affairs, we can't do that. To do application for passport is a very, very big problem. They don't allow the person to have a passport as a, as a refugee.